Welcome to You're Cordially Invited, the show that brings you candid and informal interviews with some of the best wedding professionals in the Washington, D.C. metro area. We hope that you enjoy the show, and at the end, we hope that we have inspired you to take these individuals along on your next social affair. Welcome to You're Cordially Invited, the video blog that brings you candid and up close and personal interviews with some of the best wedding professionals in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Today we're on location in Herndon, Virginia at Soliloquy Bridal Couture, where the best kept secret lies here. Today we're going to talk with the area's most recognized designers, Ms. Sandra Falk of Sandra Falk Couture. And we're gonna talk about wedding dresses and what it means to say yes to the dress. Welcome, Sandra, how are you? I'm great, thank you so much, Tara. Oh, oh thank you for joining me today. I am just so excited about talking with you and, and all of your fabulous designs that you create. But before we get into that, I just wanna learn a little bit about Sandra Falk. Who is Sandra Falk? Give us a little background as far as how you guys started in this industry and who you are. A little background about myself, I had a, a passion for fashion at a really young age. I, really, I didn't realize what it was, but because I'd gone to a private school and had to wear a uniform for so many years, I found, my, I found myself not liking to look like everybody else and I always wanted to do something different, mm -hmm. either wear a pin, a sash, or something attached to the uniforms, which was a definite no. So. I asked my mother one day, I was probably about 11, Mom, can you please, please, please buy me a subscription to Vogue magazine? Wow. Back then it was kind of expensive and that my mother would consider that frivolous spending. So um, she bought me a magazine and I just would look through it cover to cover to cover to cover to cover and I told myself one day I'm going to make stuff that's in. That was like your inspiration. That was it. It's going to make stuff in this magazine. And when I was about 12, my mom bought me my very first sewing machine. I had taught myself to sew with a needle and thread and I was able to make some things, not completely <laughs> wearable, but she bought me this sewing machine and then I just went to town. I mean, I would take old sheets and whatever scraps of fabric I could find and just try to make my own patterns. Not that anything made sense to anybody except me, but um, it was kind of like a puzzle. I could see something and then I would try and copy it. Okay. So um, no one else in my family sews except me. That's which, you. Yeah. It was just like boring with inside of you. It was. I think there was one moment when I saw Mahogany, which is an amazing, amazing film. And it just does something to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I looked at, you know, the character in this movie, I said, if she could do that, I can certainly do that. So I just had to find a way to get myself to the to the next step. So when I was in high school, I took sewing class all through high school, drove my sewing instructor absolutely insane because I could see something and I could make it. And she would want you to read the directions and I would skip steps because if you get to the same point, what's the problem? Well, she had a problem because you need to have direction. I learned that until I got into college. Um, so. so you went to professional School of Design. I did. Okay. I went to Rainbow College of Design in Chicago. Okay. That was back in the 80s. Okay. And um, it was probably the most um, enlightening and empowering thing I ever did for myself. I was able to truly find myself when I went to school because it was something that I was truly interested in and I excelled at it. To this day, I can't think all of my teachers, and I'm still friends with one of my really good teachers from, from wow. the day. That yeah. is really, really nice. Really Education nice. is very important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, fast forwarding, 
you're in this industry, the wedding industry, where girls are just so attached and so emotional. How did you get here? The first wedding dress I actually made was in Las Vegas. I had graduated from college and went on a vacation, fell in love with it, the theatrics of the city, and about six or seven months later, I moved there. And then I started working for a uniform company. Well, uniforms are pretty boring. It's, you know, poly cotton, polyester. Right, right. It's got to be the industrial forward. stuff, not fashion forward stuff. And one of the executives from one of the um, casinos that I was working with was getting married, but she was having the worst time finding her dress. Mm -hmm. So we had a conversation, and she knew that I was a designer and asked me if I could help her out. I said, okay, we'll go to lunch. And I just told her to let me know all of her ideas, and I could sketch. So we sat down. I started sketching you know, designs and, you know, ideas for her. She finally settled on one that she liked. It was a, you know, a sleeve of this, the bodice of this, the skirt of this. She liked this kind of lace. And I went to market in Los Angeles and found the components that I needed, the fabrics and everything to design this dress for her. It actually turned out really, really beautiful. And I found myself at that point really leaning towards the more luxurious side of fashion. And I I wanted to, I mean, I could do the uniforms with my eyes closed, but it was more of a challenge to make something for someone for, you know, probably one of the most important days of their lives. And um, there are some aspects about the connection that you get with the client that you don't get any place else mm -hmm. or for any other type of event. And this I was is the, like that one night or that one day, mm -hmm. they just want to be you glamorous. Get one chance to make them their image mm -hmm. of their gorgeousness. And uh, I've been designing gowns ever since. Okay, awesome. With your designs, what is the ideal Sandra Falk Couture dress? Sandra Falk Couture is very classic in style, meaning I can design a dress today and 20 years from now it'll still be relevant and people will still want it and people will still order it and they'll still buy it and the fit is still great. I love the fact that I can manipulate fabrication because that's one of my specialties. I'm really good with you know, creating my own sort of textile if I have to. And I just love to be able to mix and match unique things like I'll do a beautiful beaded corset and then when you turn the corset around it has an industrial zipper on the back which is really really amazing. I did um, the uh, trophy models for the NAACP Theatre Awards um, back in 2010. So one of the models, both of the models had these corsets with the zippers on the back. I had a lot of little starlets going, who did that and who did that and where did you get that? And that's like so cool because, you know, it showed off, it was very flattering to the figure, showed off their beautiful lines, mm -hmm. but they were in. <laughs> they were in and they weren't coming out. So fit is very, very important in a Sandra Falk Couture okay. piece. We pride ourselves on getting the fit just right. And um, so it's kind of classic with a twist. Okay, awesome. Are there certain types of fabrics that you like to work with? My favorite type of fabric, everything that we do is silk, but I'm falling in love with silk wool. Silk wool, and you think, oh gosh, it's so heavy, but it really isn't. It's a beautiful fabric. It irons well. It rarely creases unless you fold it and have an elephant sit on it, then you'll get a wrinkle. But it just holds up so well, and I think that it's a very, very flattering fabric for anybody's figure. So it doesn't matter what silhouette you design the dress in, you use this fabric. I mean, it just, it's, it's just gorgeous. Okay, awesome. And as far as like the style of the gowns that you have, there's the A-line, the ball gowns. What are most of your designs? It's a mixture of everything. Okay. It just depends on what inspired me, you know, that day or the moment that I was working on the collection. I can do some things in Ampere, I can do, you know, low v-neck spaghetti strap gowns, you can do halters. Um, I do love asymmetrical type pieces and I'm really bummed that I didn't bring this one dress to you because you would love it. It was, it was inspired by Jackie Kennedy Onassis. Wow. But it is on my website so you can go in there and you can see the gown, but it's, it's just beautiful. I think that um, 
it romanticizes women, strong women. Mm, I like that, I like yeah. that. And with your gowns, do you name all of them? I do. And what, what inspires you with the names of the dresses? Well, that's, uh, my husband and I are Catholic and we're okay. very big into our church and we're both Christian and I, growing up, I mean, I was in Catholic school, so nuns and the priests were all my friends and they all inspired me and they all would give you a little prayer every, you know, every time you'd leave the building on Sunday or leave church from school on a Wednesday. And um, my husband and I had a conversation one night. I said, you know, I'm having trouble thinking of names because you only have so many friends and there's only so many names and then who wants to end up with 50 A's <laughs> for dresses? <laughs> he says, well, you know, why don't you think about the saints that you love so much? So I have these two books that I got that are all about Catholic saints. And so before, I'll design a collection, but before I, I'll sign anything to it, I'll go and I'll read my book. And the, the name is reflective of the saint. So mm. the dress matches the saint that I just read about. So all of my gowns are named after Catholic saints. Interesting. So Interesting. I get to give the girls a little bit of a blessing because oh, I nice. can't be with them always, but right. you know, they'll have and a little you're passing them on passing to someone them on. else. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So we have three uh, gowns here, which are gorgeous, and you know which one I like <laughs> the most. I'm gonna have to make something for you, Yes, Sarah. yes, yes. Let's discuss the gowns, the three gowns that you have here. Uh, give us a little detail about them and what inspired you to make them. Well, the, we'll start with this one over here, okay. the one right behind me. This one is Karina, and I love fabric manipulation. And so the fabric on this dress, I actually have to make the fabric before the dress is sewn. So I found two um, shades of fabric that I love. This is silk taffeta, okay. silk file, sorry, silk file. Um, and so I had to literally measure out all of the strips. You cut everything in two inch strips and leave a seam allowance, and then it took me three weeks to sew all of it, and I only, I took three yards, six yards of fabric to make one corset. <laughs> because when you cut them in strips on the bias, you, you, you lose a lot of yardage. Mm. So. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. Love, love, love. Silk organza, beautiful. I mean, one thing that I learned from my sewing instructor is that when you create garments for anybody, the inside should look just as good as the outside. And so when you wear something, you should feel really great in it. So against your skin, it should feel good too. Most definitely, because so. there's nothing worse than having something nice on the outside, but then on the inside, it's just all this other stuff going on. Right, yeah. So we line them with really beautiful, comfortable fabric. So most of the time, the models, when they're trying on the dresses, oh, I don't want to get out, kind no. of thing. So if I can do that for a customer, then I think I've done my job. Awesome. So nice. this next one, this is Claire. And Claire is this beautiful Chantilly lace, very light, very flowy, it's, you know, beachy wedding, you want to get married out in a barn, out in the country. Mm -hmm. It's um, just a really sexy kind of dress. So if you want a, a, a bride that wants less fuss with trains or bustles, this is something that she would really resonate to. Nice for a beach wedding too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very light. Go barefoot mm -hmm. in the sand. You don't have to worry about someone picking up the train in the back. Awesome. And it fits beautifully. So the last one is your favorite. Yes, my favorite, <laughs> which was used in our scandal photo shoot. This is Kateri. And this is the silk wool fabric that I was telling you about. Awesome. Now this dress hasn't been touched since you brought it back. You know that, right? It's been hanging <laughs> in the boutique. But that's this what silk wool This is my Olivia does. Pope. Yes. The Olivia Pope dress. It looks very um, clean and classic. Yes. And then when you turn the dress around, the whole it's entire like, wow. back is cut out. So you want to have wow factor. You mm -hmm. want to give the something, the customer something coming and then something going. There's always going to be a twist or something unusual or sexy about the back of a Sandra Falk Couture piece okay. because you know I want to have that wow factor coming and going. Okay, wonderful. So now we're my favorite part of this dress, the back. Because whenever a girl is walking down the aisle or whenever she's walking you know, out of the room, it's the back part. You know, it's the shoes, but then when you look at the back, 
It's just like, wow. Kind of give us some details as far as what your thoughts were when you designed this. When I designed this dress, when I look at this, the sketch that I did initially, I love the neckline. I love the bogue neckline. I loved how soft it was. I loved how feminine it was. But I wanted to have a little wow factor. I really wanted someone to say, wow, did you see the back of that dress? Mm -hmm. what, how did you do that? And um, initially, the, the cutout wasn't that low. And I just kept cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. Like, let me get a little riskier. I said, you know what, if she wears a, a low-line bustier underneath there, she has really good rack, she'll be just fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I cut it out, and uh, the model absolutely loved it when she tried it on, so I knew that I had the right, the, I knew that I had designed the right back for this dress. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. On, like you said, the model that we use, she did not want to get out of the dress. It's to die for. It feels good, you know, so my... Um, Sonderfall Couture, it's a timeless original. Mm. You can have it forever, and it's still going to be relevant. Awesome. Wonderful. And with your dresses, is it a one original? Would you redesign a dress for? It depends on the client. Okay. Um, some of my clients will ask for that. It's a premium to do that because if it's a popular silhouette or a popular style, I could sell more of them. So a lot of customers will pay a premium to not have it remade and so I'll look for an unusual fabric that there's limited yardage on or something that's a last run so you can't get anymore. Then it becomes their own and they're the only ones that will be able to have the piece. Okay. And couture. Explain to the audience what is couture because it's used so much in the industry. So what does couture actually mean? Couture literally is a French word for dressmaking, but it's for high-end dressmaking. That's a higher quality of fabric. So you'll use brocade, you'll use matelassage, you'll use um, brocard silk. So it's the very finest of the finest fabrication that you use. And couture really means to have a garment custom made to fit. That's what couture is. So when you go into hot couture, whew, you're talking about you know thirty, forty thousand dollars for a dress. Okay, a little education there for you <laughs> girls that are out there buying these dresses. And what are some of the trends that you're seeing this year? Well, this year I've seen a lot of skirts over mermaid style dresses, you'll see sashes, you'll see a lot of jackets, boleros, add-on pieces that you can take, mix and match that you can take on and off your garment instead of, so for instance, a bride will come in and she'll want a strapless dress. Oh, you know, her grandmother, is, you're going to be in church, you need to cover that. Well, at the reception, she doesn't want to have a short sleeve dress on, so she'll look for, you know, pieces that she can add on to her current dress so she'll have one outfit for the ceremony and then she'll go on and after her pictures are taken she'll change and she'll take her little jacket off and then she has the strapless dress that she wants to be very sexy in. So um, you'll see a lot of that in the industry. Okay. And when brides are purchasing uh, your dresses, um, are they purchasing more than one dress or is it that unlayering? part that they're doing? Sometimes it's layering, but it really depends on the bride. Um, a lot of brides will choose a dress that's voluptuous in the bottom. So the, the bottom of the dress has either beadwork or ruching or it'll have, you know, roses in the fabric, which can be very, very heavy. And then if you have, you know, boning, you know, depending on how the dress is constructed, she may not want to carry that all night long. So then she will opt for an additional dress for the reception. Okay. And to get a Sandra Falk couture dress, what's the time frame a bride should come in and speak with you? I would love to see brides six months before their wedding. When you do a, a custom dress or you have a designer actually design the dress for you, we do we will ask for more fittings than if you were to go into a retail store and purchase one. Number one for us, by us making it ourselves, there was a lot more work involved, pattern making, adjustments, and fittings, and things like that. So six months out, you'll be really good. A lot of the fabrics come from Europe, so that gives us time to get 
the items from their warehouse through customs and back to the U.S. Okay. And what do you think influences a bride's buying decision? What's going to resonate with her usually is the style of the dress because a lot of brides think that they know what they want until they go in and they try on different silhouettes and they'll say to me, I never thought that I would ever even think about an A-line dress. I always thought that I wanted to be a mermaid or I wanted to be a fit and flare, but that really isn't what I want after seeing myself in that shape. So, okay. And do you design your own clothes? I do. You do? Okay. I do. I do a lot of my own designing when I have time. Because <laughs> sometimes it's not, it's not an option. If I get, you know, two weeks here and there, then I'll be able to come up with something. Because I have my own set of patterns. And so as I've, you know, I was one size in college. Mm -hmm. I'm one size now. So as I've aged, I've been able to adjust my patterns according to what my body's doing. So now I can pull out a pattern. I can, I can make a skirt in about an hour. Wow. Just a simple straight skirt. Nothing to it. Awesome. What does the future hold for Sandra Falk Couture? So the future for Sandra Falk Couture is very, very promising. I've been in the D.C. area for about four years. The name's getting out there. People are recognizing our work, and we're just really, really excited at every opportunity that we get. I mean, I know that our company is going to grow bigger and better and stronger, and I just think that if I keep our same philosophy about how we do our business and how we construct our garments, it's limitless for us. Awesome. And almost last question. We were talking earlier before the cameras rolled. A little secret for brides as far as what, or for even planners, what we need to carry in our little emergency kit to wipe up those little stains if something happens to a wedding dress. Oh goodness, my go-to tube of magic wand. It is the best thing ever. It will get almost any stain out. Magic wand, and where can they find magic wand? You can find wand? magic wand at any um, fabric store. Okay. Any fabric store. And it store. just comes right out. Yeah, little tube. Take the little tube, put a little bit on the spot, and if you clean it, you have to clean it with a, a white rag only. Okay. And it should it should be fine. No tied out pin. No 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 tied out, tied out no pin. No tied out pin. Magic wand. Magic, magic wand, wand only. Magic wand magic only. Wand, magic wand is for every kind of fabric. Okay. It where can your lovely gowns be found? Soliloquy Bridal Couture in Herndon carries Sandra Falk Couture. You can also view our line on my website. That's www.sandrafaultcouture.com. All right. And you can look us up on Facebook. All right. Awesome. Well, it has definitely been a pleasure. I am definitely one of your newest and biggest fans. Yay. So I will be sending all my brides here to Soliloquy to get a Sandra Falk Couture dress. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today here at the lovely establishment of Soliloquy Bridal Couture with Miss Sandra Falk Couture. If you want to say yes to the dress, come to Herndon, come to Soliloquy Bridal, come see Miss Sandra Falk Couture so that you can say yes to the dress. This is the end of our episode of You're Cordially Invited. Thank you and we'll see you next time.